So today I'm going to read this book to you, and it's called To Dare Mighty Things. So, can anyone tell me or identify who this man on the front is? Go ahead, Jordan. Do you want to know? Yes, it is. Okay, so we're going to learn a little bit today about Theodore Roosevelt. Teeny, as he was called, coughed, sneezed, wheezed, had raging fevers, and hardly ate. His asthma was so bad, he had to sleep sitting up in bed or in a big chair. Until he got glasses, he could only see things up very, very close. But that didn't stop him from studying photographs for hours of hippopotami with canoes on their backs or zebras racing across the African plains. He gobbled up books about soldiers at Valley Forge and frontiersmen Davy Crockett and Daniel Boone. I felt a great admiration for men who were fearless. I had a great desire to be just like them. T.D. stuffed hedgehogs into drawers. Sometimes they escaped. Guests were warned to check their water pitchers for snakes before pouring. He has to be watched at all times, his mother told his father. He illustrated and wrote books about ants, spiders, ladybugs, fireflies, hawks, minnows, and crayfish. He collected animals and birds specimens and created a museum in his room. He smelled, and the whole house smelled. All growing boys tend to be grubby, but the ornithological boy is the grubbiest of them all. His father told him, you have the mind but not the body. You must make your body. No one had ever met, or n never, never one to not meet a challenge. T.D. took hikes, pressed weights, um, swung up and down on bars. His skinny chest and muscles grew, but he was still scrawny and sickly. That didn't stop him from climbing mountains and volcanoes, hunting jackals on horseback, and camping in sub-freezing weather. He noted every experience in his diary. He wanted to go to college but worried that he didn't have the energy. A tutor prepared him at home. He came, he crammed three years of studying into two years. Is it not splendid I passed all eight subjects I tried, he said. He couldn't bring his, med his museum to Harvard, so he created one in his room there. His giant tortoise escaped its pen and terrified his landlady. He studied long hours, but still found time to box, wrestle, punt, ice skate, teach Sunday school, and dance the night away at fancy balls. Instead of resting in the summer, he researched and wrote a book about 97 different species of birds. Looking back over my eight years, I have never set, spent an unhappy day unless by my own fault. By 20, he fell in love with Alice... Hathaway Lee, who gave him the nickname Teddy. But before marrying, he went west to hunt. His doctor told him not to go. He had to live a quiet life or he would die soon. If I've got to live that sort of life, I don't care how short it is. He went anyway for three weeks. By Godfrey, this is fun, he said. He came home to Alice and they had a great wedding. My happiness is so great it makes me almost afraid. By 23, he was elected as, a young, as the youngest member of the New York State Assembly. He wrote four bills in one week, um, but he was new to politics and no one paid much attention to him. So he marched around the assembly yelling, sometimes for 40 minutes. Many lawmakers did not like his ideas, but they couldn't silence him. I would rather go out of politics feeling that I had done right than stay knowing I had acted uh, as I ought not to. His bills didn't pass, he became a but he became a leader in the Republican Party. I rose like a rocket. On February 12, 1884, Alice gave birth to their daughter. Teddy's happiness turned into sorrow two days later, when both his wife and his mother died. Unexpectedly, the light goes out of my life. He went back to work in a frenzy. Indeed, I think I should go mad if I were not employed. But still, he was sad. He left for the Dakota Territory to be far from all mankind, leaving baby Alice 
in the care of his sister, Vanny. He stayed almost three years hunting, chasing cattle, reading poetry, and writing books. He returned east, muscular and healthy, but still very sad. So how would you guys explain Teddy's emotions and how he's feeling at this point in his life? Yes. Like depressed. Yeah, because his wife died and his mom died all in the same time period, right? That is incredibly hard. <clears throat> then love came into his life again with Edith Caro. You have no idea how sweet my Edith is, he wrote his sister. But news of vicious blizzards pulled Teddy back to, the, to the Dakotas. He saw wildlife was disappearing from too much hunting and um, building. The land was a barren waste. Not a green thing could be seen. He could not let this happen. Teddy formed a group that lobbied Congress to pass laws to protect California's sequoias, Alaska's seals, and salmon, and seabirds. And while he was doing all this, he was also writing more books. At 31, he was appointed civil service commissioner, investigating um, illegalities in Indiana, Wisconsin, and Maryland. We stirred things up. His report criticized people um, in power, including members of his own party and a friend of the president. But no one could silence Teddy when he believed he was right. An officer, an office holder must do his duty for the whole people, not for um, any party or any fraction. Many Republican lawmakers in the Capitol sighed with relief when Teddy left to become New York's police commissioner. Teddy set out to reform New York City's police department. He got rid of the chief of police, he started a police tra training program. He patrolled the city day and night and sent warning notes to police not even on duty. Many police then took bribes to keep bars open on Sundays, though it was against the law. Teddy closed the bars on Sundays. That, the howl that rose was deafening, he said. Republican lawmakers in New York City sighed with relief when Teddy uh, left for Washington in 1897 to become the Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Teddy was convinced trouble was ahead with Spain, which controlled Cuba. He insisted the United States build more battleships, cruisers, and torpedo boats. On February 15th, 19, or 1898, when an American ship was blown up in Cuba's harbor, Teddy declared, It was sunk by an act of dirty treachery by the Spaniards. He turned out, it turned out he was wrong, but the U.S. declared war on Spain anyways. Teddy resigned from the Navy and joined the Army. In Cuba, he found himself in charge of the 1st Volunteer Cal Cavalry Regiment, nicknamed the Rough Riders. Charge, Roosevelt ordered. On July 1st, 1898, the Rough, Rider, Rough Riders <clears throat> surged up the grassy slopes of San Juan Hill in Cuba in blistering heat. Mosquitoes swarmed around them. Cannon fire and thousands of bullets rained down around them. They could not see their enemy, but they fired anyway. By nightfall, they had captured the hill. The charge itself was great fun, but it was a bully of a fight. Teddy returned home a national hero. Republican politicians all over the country, um, seeing how famous he was, urged him to run for governor of, the, of New York. He did, and he won. Republicans asked him to run as Mc uh, William McKinley's vice president. He thought the job would be too boring. I could do anything as vice. I could not do anything as vice president, and yet I would still be seeing continually, continually things I would like to do. He ran anyway, and McKinley won. Nine months later, McKinley was assassinated, and Roosevelt became president. Teddy, Edith, and their six children moved in. Uh, moved with their guinea pigs, ponies, badgers, parrots, dogs, snakes into the White House. The children raced about the house in their in their new home on stilts, roller skates, and bicycles. His daughter Alice liked sliding down the banister in evening gowns to greet visitors. Children make all forms of success, of success lose their importance by comparison, Teddy said. Um, early morning found. Early in the morning, the president was often found galloping about the Capitol on horseback, or hanging from a cable to strengthen his wrists, or staring at birds in the trees. Then came a whirl of meetings with advisors, lawmakers, and reporters. Um, evenings often ended with pillow fights, wrestling matches, and throwing water balloons off the roof. Edith said that Teddy was her seventh child. 
Business in America was booming. The small companies could not compare with the big companies called trusts. Roosevelt thought that this was unfair. He sued a railroad trust, won, and broke up the railroad trust. Then he sued 44 other trusts. He created a new bureau with rules for businesses. Our aim is to control business, not to strangle it, he said. Roosevelt was called a trust buster. He didn't like the term, but it stuck. Roosevelt wanted a square deal for all Americans, rich and poor. He spoke out against children working, um, but he could not convince lawmakers to rewrite, rewrite those laws. He helped settle a mining strike. He pushed for new laws to end unsanitary working conditions and meat packing and food plants, and to ban impure food and drugs. Many Republican leaders disapproved of Teddy's actions. I acted for the well-being of our people, Teddy said. But most people liked what Teddy did and said. They elected him in a landslide when he ran for his own term in 1904. There was still work to be done to save America's natural resources. Too many forests were gone, chopped down for the timber and money. Sheep growers had overgrazed their land, farmers had overplanted their fields, and irrigation was desperately needed. National monuments were crumbling and had to be saved. We are not building this country for a day. It has to last through the ages, Teddy said. As President Roosevelt created 18 national monuments, 50 national forests, 51 bird reservations, four national game preservations, five national parks, and 24 reclamation projects, saving 230 million acres of land. There can be no greater issue than that of conservation of this country. He told other nations to stay out of Latin America, but he thought, but when he thought it was necessary, he stepped into conflicts in Haiti, Venezuela, and the Dominican Republic. Speak softly and carry a big stick, and you will go far, he said. In 1906, he won the Nobel Peace Prize for settling a war between Russia and Japan. Roosevelt wanted to buy land in Panama to build a canal connecting the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Panama's government refused. When a local revolt started in 1903, Roosevelt sent troops to help the rebels, and the rebels won. The new government let him build the canal that he wanted. Many American lawmakers said Roosevelt's actions were unconstitutional. Roosevelt always had a, uh, was always a man of action and disagreed and refused to wait until Congress decided what should be done. I think the canals I took the canal zone and let Congress debate. While Congress de the while the debate goes on, the con or the canal also does too. Roosevelt decided not to run for a third term, but that didn't mean he was going to stay home and rest. He went to Africa to hunt and collect specimens. Returning home, he was so unhappy about what the Republicans were saying, he formed a new political party called the Progressive Bull Moose Party. In 1912, he ran for president again, and he lost. It is hard to fail, but it is worse to never have tried to succeed, he said. Teddy Roosevelt lived until he was 61 years old. No man has had a happier life than I have led, a happier life in every way. So Teddy Roosevelt ended up dying on January 6, 1919, and he was born October 27th in 1858. So, can you guys list the reasons why Teddy is so important to our country's history? Can anyone give me some reasons? No. Um, he saved over 200 million acres. Of yeah, which is a lot of land. It's pretty crazy how much he um, helped with conservation in the United States. He started his own political party. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Not very many people have done that before. He, like, he found out more information about all the new species. Yeah, so he did a lot of research on different species of animals and wrote a lot of books. A lot of books. Mm hmm Yeah. Yep. He saved a lot of species. Yeah, he saved a lot of species. He made all those national monuments and yeah, and we have a lot of these national monuments today. Like, have you guys ever been to Yellowstone National Park? No. Or up to um, Mount Rushmore? Yeah, he's been there. Yeah, we have a lot of these things still today. So he had a very large impact on the country's history. Okay, so now I'm going to have you guys do this graphic organizer. So um, if you guys want to go back to your seats, and I'll pass these out. Prop.